allow me to visually illustrate how most people feel about money and how you're going to feel about money after you watch this video. Hi everybody, it's me, Michaela. Even though I look very young for my age, it's the Asian baby face. Can you believe I'm almost 25? An important part about becoming a mature adult is learning to be financially responsible. According to an article in Inc. Magazine, saving more and spending less is one of the top five New Year's resolutions of 2019. However, saving money is also in the top five for most commonly failed. This video is part of the Sweet New Year series, where I post a new video every week of January specifically related to common New Year's resolutions to get your new year started off right. From an early age, my parents did a good job at instilling in me the value of working hard to earn money and saving that money to make a purchase you really need or want. Let's just say there were many a daddy's song comprised of the main chorus, Money Doesn't Grow on Trees, followed by a backup harmony of rebuttals from a distrusted young maiden, yours truly. In return for keeping my room neat and tidy, regularly practicing the violin and the piano, maintaining good personal hygiene, helping take care of our dog, and overall being a well-mannered, polite young lady, I received a weekly allowance. If I wanted to buy Barbie's gymnastics accessories pack, I had to first figure out what I do to earn the money, then save the money to make the final purchase. My allowance could be used towards a portion of the purchase, but I'd have to take on other household tasks to figure out how I was going to make the money to fill the gap. I remember making my parents omelets for breakfast, loading and unloading the dishwasher, setting the table, sweeping floors, folding laundry, making my parents bed, brushing our golden retriever until he had no fur left, vacuuming, sweeping floors, raking our driveway, all to earn the money I needed. As I grew out of my allowance and took on older kid jobs, like babysitting, dog walking, and watering our neighbor's garden, I learned not to be frivolous with the way I spent my money. Life isn't cheap! Aside from the obvious, have a budget and don't spend over your budget, here are my top tips on how I save money. Number one, buy on sale. Most things eventually go on sale, with the exception being if an item is independent designed. And even independent designers usually have end of season or holiday sales, so be strategic with your timing. Number two, one in, one out. If you're going to buy something new, why not sell or donate something that you already have so it's not to accumulate clutter? I love companies like Crossroads that have buy sell trade programs where you can sell or trade in your unworn or gently used clothes and accessories in return for cash or store credit. Number three, shop secondhand. If you really want an item with a higher price tag, check out places like eBay, Poshmark, Depop, or even your local thrift shop where people might be selling the same exact item, brand new or in excellent used condition. For independent designer cult classics, check out North South Bazaar on Instagram. Catherine, the moderator, updates about two to three times a day, and you can really find some good independent designer and other ethically made gems over there. For higher priced items like furniture, home decor, or tech, shop on Craigslist. Just like my West Elm chandelier score, a lot of people sell brand new or like new goods at heavily marked down prices. Even if an item isn't heavily marked down, you won't have to pay tax, which in itself is a huge savings. A bonus perk of if you buy items like furniture off of Craigslist is they'll often already be assembled, so you won't have to be bothered by putting anything together. Number four, quality over quantity. Buy one really nice pair of jeans, bedding, saucepan, etc. instead of buying something cheap that you'll have to replace soon. Oftentimes, you'll spend more money buying something cheaper that you'll have to replace multiple times instead of just dishing out more dough up front to buy a quality item that will last. If your desired quality item falls outside of your budget, revisit tip number three and shop secondhand. Number five, sit on it. Have an internal monologue with your soul. Ask yourself, do I really need this or want this? Or do I only think I want it because I saw it pop up in a targeted Instagram ad and I thought it looked really cool, but I don't really need it. Sometimes you might think you want something, but if you sit on it long enough, the feeling will pass. Similar to eating, this will cut down on impulse spending. I can't tell you how many times I thought I wanted something, sat on it for a week, then completely forgot about the item altogether. Number six. Hack the system, aka exploit the system within the rules. If you have two coupons, politely ask if you can combine them both in a purchase. Every so often you'll run into either an overly nice or ill-informed employee, both work well in this instance, who will gladly combine two discount codes for you that technically shouldn't be combined. Sometimes they can run two separate transactions for you, so you can use two discount codes that can't normally be combined. The key is to always be gracious in your ask, and sometimes they will acquiesce. Also. If an item goes on sale or gets additionally marked down after you make your purchase within a reasonable amount of time, like two or so weeks, 
Don't be afraid to ask if they will retroactively honor your discount. Number seven, the last tip. Make sure you're not auto paying for things you're unaware of. This requires rolling up your sleeves and doing a little deep dive into your bank account or credit card statements. The auto pay feature is a godsend if you're worried about forgetting to remit a recurring payment, but make sure you're not paying for services that you don't use, like a gym membership or another service that you're unaware of. A lot of times different companies will offer free 30 day trial periods, but will charge a credit card if you don't cancel on time after the 30 day period is over. I am by no means the best at saving money, but I'm trying to get better every day. Part of growing up is learning that you can do anything, but not everything. And saying no to things includes saying no to making purchases that you don't necessarily need or will put you under some sort of financial strain. Thanks for watching! If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and comment down below your best hack on how to save money. I'm also thinking about doing another video on how to creatively make money, so let me know if you're interested in that too. Keep it sweet, make your own salad, and I'll see you next week to tackle the very last resolution in our Sweet New Year series. Bye!